In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve second-degree trigonometric equations uh, by looking at some examples. Now, to solve second-degree trig equations, you're going to need to factor or use the quadratic formula. So let me write it down here to remind you what it is. Okay, so you'll use this because you are solving basically something similar to a quadratic equation, except that in place of x, uh, you now have a trig function, such as sine theta, cos theta, or its reciprocals. So let's take a look at the first one. Uh, we have sine squared theta minus sine theta. There's only two terms here, so we don't really need to use the quadratic formula because I can see that I can actually factor out a sine theta. So I'm going to do that. And what I'm left with inside the brackets is going to be sine theta and then minus 1. Don't forget the minus 1, um, and then always check. So if I distribute the sine theta back into the brackets, I will get sine squared theta, and then sine theta um, times 1 will give me, or sorry, negative 1 will give me negative sine theta. So what we now do is set each individual piece to equal 0. So we have this piece and this piece, so we have two factors here. So we can say that sine theta is equal to 0, or sine theta minus 1 equals 0. So we're going to solve each of these um, equations separately. So I'm going to draw the sine graph because I noticed that these values are 0 and 1, which are special values. Now knowing that over here in my domain, it says I want to solve from 0 to 2 pi. That means my answers have to be in radians and that I don't have to pick an angle or solve for an angle that is greater than 2 pi. So based on my graph, I can see that sine theta is 0 at 0 and at pi. So here theta is equal to 0 and pi. I check my second equation, and I'm going to isolate my trig function, which is sine theta, and that equals 1. And again, I can use my graph, and I can see that sine theta is equal to 1. 1 is right at the very top here, and that occurs at pi over 2. So theta is also equal to pi over 2. So in this equation here, we actually have three solutions. All right, let's try a different one where we do have actually three terms. So we have 2 cos squared theta minus 5 cos theta minus 3. Um, this one we can factor. Okay, so I can see that 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And I can find that negative 6, um, find two numbers to multiply to negative 6 and then adds to negative 5. So knowing how to factor already, we're going to open up two brackets, set this equal to 0. And the only numbers that multiply to 2, which is at the beginning, is 2 cos theta. And then the other bracket, I'll put cos theta. Okay, my last term is negative 3. And the only two numbers that multiply to negative 3 are 1 and negative 3, or negative 1 and positive 3. So knowing that this is negative 5, I can see that I probably need to go 2, and then over here, times a negative 3 to get negative 6. And then I'm going to add 1, because 1 times cos is positive 1. So here I have negative 6, and then plus 1 to give me negative 5. So I can check, obviously, by um, distributing this, and then I can check that I will get um, what I got before, which is 2 cos squared theta minus 5 cos theta minus 3. All right, so we're going to set each factor, this factor and this factor, and set it equal to 0. So if 2 cos theta plus 1 equals 0, and then cos theta minus 3 equals 0. If you want, you can go straight to cos theta equals negative 1 half, which you can probably see. And this one, you can go straight to cos theta equals 3 if you like. All right, so I see that in the negative half, hmm, that is a special triangle, I think. So I'm going to draw my special triangle, and I'm going to put it up over here. And it says that cos theta is negative. And this is what we did in the last video. So this one, we know that cos is negative in the second and the third quadrant. And we're going to label our sides with 1 on the high, on the x-axis, 2 on my hypotenuse, and this is negative. So the angle here, my reference angle, 
is then going to be pi over 3. So now I'm going to find my two angles. So I have one over here. So this one here I have pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. And then my other angle, which goes all the way to the third quadrant, is going to be pi plus pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. So I have two solutions. Now remember that the pi over 3 is only my reference angle, so it's not part of the solution. So the other angle, I have cos theta equals 3. Now if you think about it, and let me draw the graph for you over here. The cos graph looks like this. So it says cos theta is equal to 3. But the problem is the highest that the graph can reach is 1 and negative 1. So there's no way for actually me to reach 3. And if you actually try typing this into your calculator, you would actually even notice that it would give you an error probably on your calculator. It will give you an error actually. So this we would say is no solution. So our only solution to the second equation would be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. All right, let's take a look at a different example here. So um, this one here is tan squared theta equals to 1 over 3. And again, um, it doesn't say exact values, so it probably means that I can use a calculator. And looking at the numbers, um, I won't be able to find something that works with an exact value. Um, I also can see that I'm in radians because it says 2 pi over here. All right, so I see that my trig function is already isolated. Um, I do have a squared, which I want to get rid of. So I'm going to write tan theta equals, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to square root both sides. Now remember when you square root the right side here, it's going to be plus or minus, and then we have 1 over root 3, and what we're going to do is we're going to find a reference angle, and remember when we find the reference angle, we're going to type this in with the positive 1 over root 3. So my reference angle is 0 0.32. Now seeing that it's positive and negative, that means that these angles are in the positive quadrant, which is first and third, but I also have angles in the negative where tan is negative, and that would be the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So I actually have an angle in each of the different quadrants here. So if I plot this out, I can see that I have 0 0.32 is not an um, exact value. I can't actually find um, an angle from 1 over root 3 because there is no special triangle that uses root 3. And um, it's not part of our graph because we don't have enough information. So we're going to use our calculator to find all the angles in each quadrant. So in quadrant 1, um, it already is the same as a reference angle. So that's fine. Um, in quadrant 2, shall call it the quadrant 2 angle, theta 2, um, is going to be pi minus 0 0.32. So that's going to be 2.82. <coughs> okay, and then in quadrant 3, I have pi plus 0 0.32, which equals 3.46. And then my last one I have is in quadrant 4. So my fourth angle is going to be 2 pi minus 0 0.32, which equals 5.96. All right, so for this one, I have four solutions here. All right, let's take a look at one more. And this last one that I want to take a look at um, is a reciprocal, since we haven't dealt with any of those yet. So when we look at a reciprocal, we can actually work it and factor it the same way that we would a primary trig function. So I'm going to see there's no coefficient in the front. I want to find two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. So I'm going to open up two brackets. And remember that equals 0. And those two numbers are going to be 2 and 3. So positive 2 and positive 3. Set each factor equal to 0. So that we have cosecant theta equals negative 2. And also cosecant theta equals negative 3. Now you might think this is similar to the cosine one where it didn't exist and there was no solution. 
have, remember, these are reciprocals. So the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. So I'm going to write sine theta, and then I'm going to flip and take the reciprocal of my right side. So this will be now negative a half. I'm going to do the same thing with the second um, equation. So sine theta equals negative one third. All right, so I'm going to find my reference angle. So remember, we're going to type this out. Um, so this will be the inverse sine of positive a half. So here I have a reference angle of 0 0.52. And I just draw a little triangle here. So sine is negative in the third and the fourth quadrant. So this is 0 0.52 and 0 0.52. So I'm going to go pi plus 0 0.52. That gives me 3.67. And then to find the second angle, I have to go 2 pi. So the second angle is here, is minus 0 0.52. And that will give me 5.76. All right, so the second um, equation, sine theta equals negative 1 third. So same thing. So this time I'm just going to go a little bit quicker. So this time I'm just going to say that theta r is 0 0.34. Okay, so again, these, because sine is negative, it's still going to be in the third and fourth quadrant, but this time we're going to use a ratio, sorry, a reference angle of 0 0.34. So I'm going to have pi plus 0 0.34 to give me 3.48, and also 2 pi minus 0 0.34, and that will give me 5.94. So again, I actually have four solutions, two from the first factor and two from the second factor.